Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube, Metal Complex here, and today I've got a really interesting knife review slash overview to share with you guys. This is the original Microtech QD Scarab. This knife is discontinued, but as many of you are well aware of by now, the new Scarab 2 is about to come out. Thanks to at Amateur Knives on Instagram, please give him a follow, it's because of people like him that I'm able to bring you guys daily knife content. I get to look at a Microtech that I've, I've never handled before, and I figured uh, this is a great opportunity for me to look at um, you know the original one before I take, by the way, yes, I will definitely be taking a look at the Scarab 2. Uh, but I wanted to take a look at this and give my thoughts on it. This is, um, you know, one of the most notorious, well, not I don't want to say notorious, it's one of the most well-known OTFs in existence. Uh, and it's been around forever. People know what this thing is. And, I mean, it's like every OTF design out there is basically, you know, made by another company. There's there's a little bit of scarab in it. So, this, uh, in a lot of ways, you know, this is the OG um, there are actually two versions of this. There's the executive, which is the smooth body, uh, and then there's the QD or quick deployment, which is this version of it with the uh, track tech or this kind of the, the skate. It's like the skateboard tape sort of inlays. Um, th there's two different versions of it. This is the QD. Um, that's what we're looking at here. So yeah, really, really cool. I actually just got off the, not the uh, phone with uh, Wendell from Microtech Knives. I've called in for information. Uh, at Microtech Knives many times. And just so you guys know, they are super nice and super helpful. Uh, Wendell is awesome. He gave me all the details on this and I've got some some cool information for you guys. Um, so thank you very much, Microtech Knives, for being awesome and being super helpful every single time I call in. That was That's just really nice to know that uh, you guys are there to answer questions. Anyways, thanks so much to my generous patrons for supporting me right now. If you'd like to get your hands on some cool stickers and some other benefits, uh, there is, of course, a link right down in the description. Your support means the world to me. And please follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this guy. Uh, overall length, <laughs> I know, I know 100% somebody is going to go, that looks exactly like the Lightning OTF. Guys, the Lightning OTF is basically a clone of the Scarab. I'm sorry, that sounds so sarcastic and condescending, but I know the Lightning OTF is not an original design. It's widely considered to be a reliable, cheap OTF, but it is no secret that the Lightning is based on the Scarab. Has been that way for a long time. Sorry for the dripping condescendence and sarcasm, but I know somebody's gonna say that. No, it's all right. We all start somewhere, but that's the truth for anybody wondering. Overall length of the body, technically 7.9 inches with the glass breaker, 8.35, 8.4 inches overall. Blade length is coming in at three points. Yeah, you could call it 3.5 down here. We'll call it 3.5. Cutting edge, three and a quarter. How about some size comparisons? First off, let's go ahead and put it up against the combat Troodon. I think that's what people want to know most uh, often is how does it compare with the combat Troodon. The combat Troodon is coming in at about 9.1, maybe nine and a quarter with a glass breaker. It's important to understand that the new Scarab, apparently the Scarab 2, is about the same length as the combat Troodon. So this is the old one, smaller, right? It's kind of like the old SOCOM Elite versus the new SOCOM Elite. They went bigger uh, with the new one. So there you go. How about up against the uh, Ontario Rat 1? Rat 1 is coming in at 8.6 inches overall. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2 is coming in at 8.3 inches overall. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Where is it? Here it is. Ritter Hogue coming in also, right about 8 inches overall. It's about the same if you, maybe, maybe, yeah, it's about the same. Ah, uh, and then uh, how about the uh, Spyderco Pair 3, and also we'll put the uh, Troodon in there. Both the uh, Microtech Troodon, this is the standard size Troodon, and Pair 3, they both come in at about seven and a quarter. So if you've ever been curious about Scarab versus Tro uh, Troodon, just standard Troodon, there you go, seven and a quarter. And last but not least, the Pickle Grip, the Mini Griptilian coming in at six and three quarter inches overall. How's the action in the sky? So this is interesting. The Scarab has two springs in it. Most uh, OTFs, like the Combat Troodon, they have a single spring. The Scarab has two springs in it, and it is noticeably, whoops, 
We had a misfire there, which is something that I've seen happen with this knife a little bit. I don't know that that's necessarily a common thing with this knife. It might be just this one. Uh, but anyways, we're going to talk about that here in a sec. I knew it was going to happen. The Scarab, and this is an old design uh, that has uh, been discontinued, right? Uh, and it might be that because this is from 2015, it needs to be sent in for some maintenance. So let's not judge it too quickly. But despite that misfire, the idea behind the Twin Springs is that the blade fires reliably. The blade deploys. It has the spring tension, right? It might be, it's, it's always, you know, recommended that uh, you maintain these knives with, I believe Microtech uses REM oil. So maybe it just needs a shot of that or something. But the idea with the extra spring is that it's always got the power to deploy. What I've noticed is happening is that it's not actually misfiring with not enough power. When it does misfire, it fires all the way out and bounces back. So maybe it's, this is just one that needs to be sent in for maintenance. But that's the idea. If you dig real deep on the internet, you're going to find, um, actually, it's not really that deep. You're going to find uh, someone someone making a post somewhere that's like, oh yeah, the reason behind the Twin Springs is so it can fire underwater. No, <laughs> that's not true. I, I read that and I thought, that sounds a little bit fishy. <laughs> no, I told, yeah, and by the way, I'm intentionally imitating Nick. Um, but uh, no, um, actually, that's not the case. I, uh, Wendell from Microtech Knives said, no, that's absolutely not true. I, I, using a knife or a knife deploying underwater is a totally different monster. That is not why we designed it that way. Um, the, uh, the idea there is, is that you have the spring power. And he said, in some cases, it might be that if one spring completely fails, the other spring might have enough power to actually to deploy the blade. But really, it's just backup power to make sure that it deploys. And I will say, it definitely has some power. You see what happened there? All the way out and all the way back in. Now, I've noticed that if I fire it uh, a little bit at an angle, it does that. If I fire it down at an angle, it's not really doing that anymore. So I think it has something to do with the angle and how the internals are, uh, you know, responding there. But that's just what's happening here, I guess. We're going to talk about that a little bit more here in a sec. But there is definitely a lot of extra power. I think the drawback here is for some people... That's going to be, I mean, for some people, my combat troodon is too much to, to manipulate. This is at least 50% more tension on that button, uh, at least. Uh, that's that's going to be really difficult for some people to fire. I don't know if the same, there we did it again. I don't know if the exact same thing is going to um, apply with the, um, the new Scarab. And by the way, you shouldn't be, I've, that, this is the only Microtech that I've ever handled that seems to have a misfire problem. Um, every other Microtech that I've ever handled does not have that issue. Um, so I'm guessing, again, it needs to be sent in for maintenance or it needs some oil. I'm not going to judge it too hard, but we're going to talk about that. This is I'm going to be light on this guy because it's discontinued, right? So, But anyways, um, yeah, it definitely does fire harder and it is harder to push that button up. Um, let's go ahead and do uh, carry profile. So thickness up against the pair of three. Para 3, you can see there, it's a little tiny bit thicker than the Para 3. Not nearly as robust as I thought it was going to be. Um, how about length and height up against two knives that definitely have awkward carry profiles? Nobody ever seems to complain about the, para, the PM2 and Para 3. It is uh, nowhere near as tall, even with the firing switch. And length, it's a little longer than the, well, it's now uh, handle length with the glass breaker. is about as long as the PM2. Maybe, maybe just a hair longer, right? Um, there are companies who make screws that um, replace the glass breaker, so you could actually have it like this, in which case it'll be shorter. I think what's important to remember here is that it's really just not a cumbersome object. It's pretty easy. I mean, if you wear skinny jeans and th something like this is too thick of an object, then okay, maybe that's going to be too big for you. But if you're used to carrying knives, you know, in, with similar dimensions to the PM2 and Para 3, the Scarab I don't think will bother you. We have aluminum on the frame, the chassis is made of steel, and then obviously the blade's made of steel. So the weight of this guy is coming in a totally reasonable four and a quarter ounces. That's over the four ounce mark, it's certainly over the ounce and inch mark, but gosh darn it. But uh, you know, it's um, uh, not something that I think is really going to be a problem for most people. Um, see what I mean when I do it down like that? I wonder if I, if I fire it up. Yeah, it's really only when I fire it straight. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, yeah, uh, it's um, uh, it's not going to be an issue in the pocket. It's certainly just not going to be something that's going to bother most people unless you're used to carrying the Para 3 lightweight uh, or the bug out, in which case this is going to feel too heavy, right? If you're wearing athletic shorts, skinny jeans, not going to be great. Work pants is going to be normal. This is about the 
nor it's about a really normal size of knife, right? And it's a really preferable size. It's also you get a lot of cutting edge with it, right? And it's nice and ergonomic. So yeah, definitely. Um, how about hardware check? Well, we can't do that. This is using the old. Um, what do we get? It's proprietary. This is proprietary hardware, but it's not tri-wing. This is before they were using tri-wing, which looks like this. These screws right here. Um, but uh, yeah, so you, you'd need a special tool to get into that. I don't know if you can still buy that tool. Like I said, I mean, this knife now is five years old, about to be six years old, the one that's on the table here. So, um, so I can't use my tools that are definitely linked right down to the description that are highly recommended. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, anyways, um, I think that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, we should do blade stock thickness just so you guys know what we're looking at here. I'm gonna guess that blade is about 135 thousandths. Let's find out. Blade stock thickness, oh, let's close it all the way. Blade stock thickness on the QD Scarab coming in at 120 thousandths, so not even that. Very similar to a Benchmade Griptilian. Um, yeah, all right, let's move on. So again, the QD Scarab, uh, the difference here is that it's got these grip tech inlays. Um, they do provide extra traction for sure. Um, the part that actually contacts your pants though, when you put the pocket clip in your pocket, uh, the nice thing is, is that it's really just aluminum. So the track tech is lower, or the track grip tape inserts are actually lower than the frame. So you shouldn't have to worry too much about it, you know, messing up your pockets, but it definitely does provide some extra traction. That That is for sure. I think the, um, my uh, combat Troodon would be the equivalent of the executive or the smooth body version of this. And I think that would be just fine too. You, you have to pay a lot of extra money to get this version of it, but that was the version that everybody wanted. Um, but yeah, I mean, the fit and finish is great. This version is sort of gold or sort of FDE. They came in a lot of different colors, right? Scarab always has the, the Scarab Beetle on the pocket clip. That's kind of neat. Firing switch is great. Curiously, there's no play in this firing switch, but I have play in the Combat Troodon. I don't know if they changed that intentionally. And then this Troodon here, this Troodon has no play in the button. So I don't know what the deal is with that. Uh, but there's no play in this button. Like I said, it is a, there's a lot of spring power and it takes a lot of force to get that blade to deploy. I mean, uh, to, to push this up. I'm hoping with the new Scarab, they find a way to keep two springs in there, but make it not as difficult to push that up. Because for me, it's not that big of a deal, but it's not like, oh, I'm so strong. No, it's like if you handle a lot of OTFs, especially a lot of Microtechs, eventually you just figure out the angle, you know? For most people, it's really uncomfortable and difficult to fire something like this, and this one is really gonna be a problem for a lot of people. So if you're looking at one of these on the secondary market, just consider that. The switch also, I don't wanna say it digs in your face. If you really wanna choke up on it, like right here, you're gonna feel it a little bit. I don't know if it really pokes up that much more. And like the Troodon, the Combat Troodon, it's about in the same place, it's just a little bit, maybe it just looks like it's got more of a peak. It's about the same, right? So yeah. Ergonomically, I mean, it is comfortable. Um, you gotta be careful about maybe accidentally running your, your index finger up on the blade. Just be cognizant of where your hand is. But yeah, you're locking in pretty well considering the handle is basically a rectangle with a few different you know, areas where your hands can lock in. Jimping's all in the right place. It's not hyper aggressive. This is not a knife. Even with the pocket clip being kind of a bill, it really isn't that uncomfortable. I could see myself using this for an extended period of time. The biggest areas that might become problematic are the switch and then the bill of the pocket clip. But they're really, again, they're really not that bad. Uh, the inlay work is pretty good. Um, there's nothing here that really looks bad or out of place. I mean, they did a good job fitting everything. It looks nice. I would be happy with this if I had purchased it. Uh, there's a glass breaker on the back. I don't need it. It's there. It's the ball bearing clip, not the pokey one that they have used before. So that's fine. Uh, if you really like glass breakers, then there you go. This one is one of those styles where it'll be a lot easier to get off. You can run like a steel rod through there, just unscrew it, or you can just a side of it and just sort of slowly screw because you're going to run into that bill on this side. The clip can be switched, um, you know, to one side or the other. Left-handed people, if you're gonna carry this, obviously you just take this off and switch it around because you want the firing uh, mechanism on the on the spine, right? So that's cool, lefties rejoice. Pocket clip's okay, you're definitely not gonna lose this knife if it's attached to your person. The way that this thing is designed, it's got like two pinch zones. I just don't like the bill. But it does go in and out of the pocket pretty smooth, all right? And it carries almost, I mean, you can force it into an absolutely deep position, in which case 
it will have three separate pinch zones here, here, and here. So you're not going to lose it. <laughs> definitely, definitely not going to lose this knife um, unless you, I don't know, if you go skydiving with it, maybe. Don't do that. I would imagine they have rules against that. Um, uh, yeah, but um, I was trying to remember if there was anything else I want to say. Oh, there's a little lanyard hole back here. People who want to attach a lanyard. And then the other side is much the same as the front, right? Except it doesn't have the screws. The screws are on this side. You can't touch the tip of the blade up here, so that's nice. And it doesn't look like on this guy we have any rubbing. This is a tumbled finish. This blade comes in a lot of different variants, different coatings, things like that. I like the little fuller right here, and I also like that they put a fuller back here. It's pretty rare that I see that. It doesn't serve any purpose. It's just kind of nice looking. Um, the drop point blade is probably the way that I would go. I kind of like that. This one's in LMAX. Help me out, Microtech people. What was the year of the very first Scarab? I'm going to guess it was 2012, but I could be wrong about that. Maybe it was way older. Maybe I'm way off and it's newer than that. I feel like I've seen 2012 on a Scarab before, but this thing has been around for a long time. And I don't know exactly when it was discontinued. I want to say that the last Scarabs were 2017. Again, I could be wrong about that. It's probably something that I should have asked Wendell, but you guys are pretty good about correcting me. These knives are made in the United States. Uh, you can see the, they have a serial number, right? Uh, if you are looking at your scarab that you bought on the secondary market and you're wondering if it's real, this is a real one. This is what they should look like. If something looks funky, you should contact Microtech because there are definitely clones out there and clones suck. Don't buy clones. Don't, uh, don't sell clones. Don't, eat, don't mess with them. Uh, this, that's, they, they suck. So, uh, yeah, and they're not the real thing. They're not made the same way. They're not made with the same material, same tolerances or anything like that. I'm sure people are like, but that one misfires. Well, there's a, you know, there's always a chance with every design, you know, that there's going to be a few that may have slight issues, in which case Microtech has a great warranty and will unlikely, or I'm sorry, undoubtedly take care of it, right? Um, this is also, again, a model from 2015, which means it's six years old. So there's a number of things that could be causing that. I don't think that um, misfire issues are super common with these. I have heard of misfire issues with OTFs in general, not specifically Microtex, but just across the board. You know, every now and then I hear, oh, I don't mind misfires. You know, again, maybe there's something caught in it. That's one of the downsides of an OTF is it has this open hole. And if something gets there in the chassis, you know, it can cause that to be the case. What makes the blade bounce and re I don't know, maybe it's the way that it hooks to the chassis. Maybe that, that little hook is not shaped exactly right and it needs to be changed, right? A bunch of different little teeny tiny things. It does stink that it's misfiring though. Um, that's definitely not something that um, is, you know, great with an OTF. You really want to make sure, you know, obviously if you're going to carry an OTF, the reason that you do is because it is convenient be able to deploy the blade and retract the blade. So you want to make sure that it locks out. Once these blades are locked out, I've seen X-Ring's channel, they're super duper durable, but it needs to lock out in order to be able to be used, right? So if it misfires and it bounces back, well, then you have to reset it, get it to, you know, lock back out. But again, this is discontinued. So any complaints about, you know, what may or may not be a design flaw, it's kind of moot point right now, you know? Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know. If, you've, if you own a, a Microtech Scarab, you know, uh, or you've had multiple, I'd like to hear what your experience is with misfirings, things like that. But uh, yeah, obviously you, you don't want it to misfire. Uh, with my Comet Truodon, I've never had an issue with misfiring um, ever. Um, but uh, that's just my experience. And all the other Microtechs I've owned, actually. My other Combat Truodon, my Ultratech, my Dirac, Delta, never had an issue with misfiring. So that's just my experience. Tumbled blade looks great. Uh, the edge is done well. This appears to be unused. And honestly, it's not thin behind the edge, but it's certainly not thick either. It's a very capable blade, very basic, straightforward blade that's going to be fairly robust. As far as OTFs goes, uh, go, this is going to be a durable knife. I mean, Microtech knives in general are durable. The idea behind the twin springs, despite the irony of this one having misfire issues, I think is a cool idea to help make sure that the blade actually deploys. And again, this one is definitely making it all the way out. The spring power is definitely enough to get the blade to come all the way out, but it's bouncing back, which means well, it's, it's the, the error is where it's hooking to the chassis or locking to the chassis, right? So that's, that's the problem there, not the firing power. The firing power here is definitely substantial. Like I said, it's probably about 50% more powerful than my combat Troodon, or that's what it feels like anyway. 
Um, is it strong enough to hold it up to a solid surface and fire it and have it go through? No. Why does everybody want a knife? That can, that's not safe. It's not how you should judge. Knives don't do that. The, the only one that's going to come close is the Halo 6. And even then, I don't know that it's that strong. If you're under the impression that OTFs do that, you've been watching too many movies. That's, uh, that's just that's movie nonsense. Um, and it's not the reason for an OTF. That's not, the, that's not the idea. The idea behind an OTF is to have the blade conveniently deploy and retract. That's the entire idea. It's no more than that. Uh, these are tools. They can certainly be used as other things, but the, the initial design philosophy is a convenient cutting tool. That's it. Um, so anyways, I think the last time I remember these things being brand new, I want to say that the executive was something around what was it, 400 to 450, and then the QD Scarab, I remember it at one point being as low as 485, but I think it bumped up and was in the mid 500s. It's discontinued now, so you're probably gonna pay the same or more on the secondary market. These are cool. Honestly, the overall you know, profile, uh, this is one of the most you know preferable sizes in terms of an OTF. Um, I think the, uh, uh, the blade is awesome, things like that. Um, Truthfully, I don't know that this is something that I would suggest people chase down on the secondary market. On one hand, I really want to tell people just wait for the Scarab 2, but the Scarab 2 is also way bigger. It's almost, it's, I mean, it's the same knife, it's just way bigger. It's the size of the Combat Troodon, right? So, um, honestly, you know, my final thoughts on the Scarab are, you know, and little things I can complain about, obviously, um, the, um, I don't need the glass breaker. The proprietary hardware sucks. It's definitely the tension on the switch is super heavy. That's going to bother a lot of people, and I don't want it to misfire. But that might just be an issue with this one. Um, and uh, you know, obviously, these are going to be illegal for a lot of people. For a lot of people, they're like, none of this matters because I can't own it or carry it. Right? Maybe you can own it, but you can't carry it. Um, I do like the size. Uh, I do. I, the firing power feels really, really good. I like how they look. I don't know that I personally would go with a grip tape version, but whatever. Um, I kind of like the smooth body a little bit better. Um, I don't know what they, I don't know if they were actually doing some of these in M390 and 204P at the end. I feel like Elmax was always what they were. Lmax is a great steel. It's a super steel. It's a powder steel made by Bowler. Very, very tough. Um, a little bit better edge retention, I think, than S35VN. And I think it's a little bit tougher having just enough chromium to be uh, stain resistant. What is it? Is, is Lmax 14 or 15% chromium? I can't remember. It's a great steel. It's one of the most underrated super steels out there for sure. If it's heat treated correctly, I think you want Lmax. I think they aim to hit 60 to 62, something like that. But yeah, Lmax is a great steel. Perfectly, um, you know, a perfect steel for this knife for sure. I, uh, I think this is cool. I, I mean, if it fire, if it, if it never misfired, I'd really love this knife, you know, and I'm sure that most of them don't have misfiring issues. If yours is having misfiring issues, it's probably something you should send back into Microtech. They've got a great warranty. Um, so do that. I'm, it makes me very, very interested in the new Scarab, a bigger, meatier version of this that has the same double spring setup but is slightly easier to fire would be ideal. <laughs> that would be the best version of this that they could come out with. It will undoubtedly be very expensive. Um, I'm, ex I'm fully expecting the new Scarab to be well over $500, but um, I'm still gonna pick one up. Um, this is a neat knife. It's not necessarily my favorite OTF in the entire world. It's also not something that I can recommend considering it is discontinued and un uh, very likely, you know, too expensive on the secondary market. But it was neat and I was really happy for an opportunity to take a look at this. I cannot wait for the Scarab 2. That's the, um, that's, that's what I'm, you know, the end result of this review is it just really makes me excited for the Scarab 2. So anyways, I think that's going to be pretty much it for today's review. Please make sure to follow Amateur Knives on Instagram and also follow me on Instagram at Metal underscore Complex. I will be linking Microtech knives in general that you absolutely can buy right now right down in the description. So feel free to check that out. If you make a purchase uh, using one of my links, it does directly benefit my channel. So I would appreciate that. But if not, that's fine too. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.